Hey everybody, welcome to another Cinema A to B episode. Cinema A to B, because Ben and I thought there wasn't enough discussions from two middle-aged men about movies on the internet. So hey, <laughs> we're going to add our voices to the mix. But here we go. Today, we're going to talk about 2024's George Miller's Furiosa, A Mad Max Saga. So Ben, lead us in, buddy. Thoughts? All right, man. <laughs> lead us in <laughs> lead us into why was this film made oh, no. i have no idea so my problem with it is that it in every category that i tried to evaluate it under it was inferior to fury road mm -hmm. in every conceivable way that left me going why I, i'm kind of starting to figure it out that furios is just not interesting enough at least how she's written for this movie mm. to warrant a prequel. And I should state for the record that I don't like prequels anyway. Mm -hmm. From a story standpoint, I find them completely unnecessary. And then starting from a point of, of weakness mm -hmm. for the viewer. And so I already had this whole held against it. I did not see this in the theater. I waited um, and saw it recently here at, at the house and, and gave it a good, you know, I wasn't distracted. I wasn't on my phone or anything like that. It has its moments, but I just was left wanting in so many different ways. And, and my problem is the best that this movie offers is this might be the best thing I've seen Chris Hemsworth do. Oh, wow. From a, perform from a performance standpoint as Dementis, this, this might be, this was the only thing that kept me interested in watching the film was not Furiosa. It was Dementis. And that was kind of barely kept me engaged. Yeah. I don't have a whole lot of great things to say about this, about this film. I mean, they even, <laughs> they even went away from the really hyper stylized orange and teal of Fury Road and dialed it back so far that when they showed you the scenes from Fury Road in the credits they pulled they had pulled all of the orange and teal out the the posters are really deceiving for this movie because the posters would have you think that it it has the same stylization as fury road with that really heavy-handed color grade and it really doesn't it's dialed way way back and to more of a pretty neutral look and so i i was like you really you didn't even maintain that mm -hmm. Now, my concerns when I saw the trailer was that I thought the visual effects looked like too clean. And there were times where it where it was problematic. Overall, it was it was okay. I, di I didn't think that the but then but then the set pieces weren't as like dynamic as Fury Road. The the car work wasn't as interesting. Like in every turn, it was like, nope, it's it's a downgrade, it's a downgrade, it's a downgrade. So I think word of mouth with this movie spread really fast. I'm not talking about major media, but I'm talking about like friends that had seen this and word of mouth spread fast. And like, that's what killed it. And that's what basically made it a massive loss leader for the studio. Yeah. But I've, I've dumped on this movie enough. I'll, <laughs> I want your, your take on this. So I don't have much better things to say myself. To it. I think I liked it a little bit better than you from just your intro. I will say I'm also, I don't really like prequels either, mostly because there really is no fear for the main characters. Because obviously, I know Furiosa can't die in her movie because she's in essentially what's the sequel and Matt, you know, in Fury Road. So, like, there is no scare. There is no danger for this character. Yeah, we're going to see her get maimed. Yeah, we're going to see her get close maybe to death or in pain. But really, she's going to have to succeed in some way. While I do really like, you know, Dementis and that character and kind of all of the levels that they gave him of how he wanted to care for this person and kind of adopted as a daughter, even though he killed the mother, like all this kind of different stuff, I would have thought it would have been much more interesting to see more of her relationship with um, Immortan Joe mm -hmm. as, as opposed to Dementis. Because they're like, even even in like kind of the sense, we're going to spoil, I'm sorry. If you haven't seen it, go go see it or don't, don't care. But her time with Immortan Joe is really not enough 
or it they kind of skip over it at the end where she basically you know gets her to the point of wanting to rebel and take all of his wives you know and basically get to the point of, of fury road but you don't really get her hatred of him or like the reason behind it i mean obviously she wants to get back but at this point she's been so long in the wasteland like why you know it's still kind of that calling but she's never been as forceful or at really that aggressive towards it obviously the most is during furiosa where she's like trying to get out and she then she becomes one of the drivers right she becomes a praetorian there's just a lot of points that just don't connect well with the character to get her to theron's position in fury road and i would have much rather seen though have it a less actiony movie and a lot more of how do we get her from joining doing immortal joe's bidding to basically stealing his wives and going off you know that that was much more interesting i will say though dementis's nose not great my goodness the entire time (laughs) i'm looking i'm going that's a fake nose yeah that's a fake nose like i understand maybe they didn't want to make chris hemsworth as pretty as normal they wanted to like you know give him a feature that's just not attractive but i didn't see it as an unattractive feature i just said oh there's a nose on there's a fake nose on chris hemsworth the entire time like it just was distracting it was not not good the other things too like Granted, now there's been obviously a decent amount of time between Fury Road and this, but this had a higher budget, but looked so much worse and felt like so much more was CGI than what was done in Fury Road. I felt like Fury Road was a lot more practical effects, a lot more. I mean, and really Fury Road is 90% of the movie is basically them on the road is that whole truck sequence. And that was so much more interesting than all of the stuff that they brought here. And I didn't have problems too much with uh, Anya Taylor-Joy's performance. I thought she was a good choice. I just didn't like the decisions to make her not talk for most of the movie, which obviously Theron doesn't talk for most of the movie either. So that kind of was in character, but it also made it harder for you to connect with the character. Like essentially she was trading on, hey, you've seen Mad Max Fury Road, so you know who this is. And so that's what's going to connect you to the character. But if you're coming to this fresh, there's not a whole lot outside of the opening sequence where you're really like, I'm rooting for this person. You know, she's kind of like a little bit like the violent X-23 and Logan, but not nearly as likable. Like right. 100% Daphne and uh, as X-23 drew me in to be like, I'm really concerned for your plight. Where both, I f- forget her name, whoever played Young, Furiosa, and then Anya Taylor-Joy, neither of them I was drawn into to care about them. And so this is one of the downfalls of it. So between that, it felt like there were moments where I'm watching this, and I have this on Blu-ray. And so I was watching the actual Blu-ray. So no artifacting, no compression. It definitely didn't look nearly as good. And there were moments where I'm like, Holy cow, that's CGI. Now, and I say that because there's moments, and I'm sure you understand that when I see something fantastical, I'll go, I can easily, my brain goes, that's CGI, but it looks good enough to be believable that I've, my brain tricks me into thinking that it's believable or doesn't really notice it. Like it just, it's part of the story. It's part of the world. And I'm just in it. This had moments where it drew me out going, oh, that's CGI. And that's not good CGI. Like, this is pretty bad. Like, this is Anakin riding one of those, you know, zit looking creatures and attack of the clones kind of bad. Yes. And it just was, we're we're beyond this. And this movie had a larger budget, not by much, like 10 or 20 million, I think, than than the original. So obviously that doesn't stretch nearly as far. But this made less than half of the first one of Fury Road. So you're when you talking- start putting the marketing budget in this, they lost oh, they a lost couple hundred million on this. Yeah. yeah. There, there are a couple of points with the CGI that really stuck out to me as being really bad. There's several renderings of entire, you know, biker gangs in CGI. Yep. And when they're riding, it's fine. But when they, when they crash and everybody like fly, the bodies like fly off, it's really poorly done. It does not, the physics don't look right, which mm-hmm. has been a big complaint with CGI from the very beginning is that it's really hard to give computer generated imagery weight. It, you're trying to get the computer to tell what gravity is supposed to do to the model. And for whatever reason, things just look like they float. And then there's a scene where it's it's one of the first times that Furiosa goes into the area where 
his Amorton Joe's wives are. Mm -hmm. And everything looks okay in the shot, but then there's this wife that's making her way down the stairs. And I don't know if you noticed it, but she was like comped in later and she doesn't move properly down the stairs. Huh. It's like she was recorded, either recorded after the fact or she's computer generated and she doesn't line up with the steps properly. And so it it's very jarring. Yeah. And there's moments in the movie, there's probably three or four moments in the movie like that where the effects work is so bad, it takes me immediately out of it. It's super jarring and it's like, this is not the way yeah. a nearly $200 million movie is supposed to look. What are we doing? Well, especially because, I mean, this is the same thing like with Ferrari, like where the car goes off track and then launches itself into space. It's like, these are things. And let's be honest, Fury Road had a lot of practical effects, but it also did have a lot of CGI. And I can tell you, that was fantastic. Like what happened? What what happened to the team? What happened to whoever was supervising this to make sure that it looked the same or it had the same feel? Like This was obvious to me. They didn't use the same shooting techniques to make this movie that they did for you. No. It was either too stressful on the crew and or, or he couldn't hire as many people. I don't know when this thing exactly was shooting. I don't know if the, you know, if strikes and stuff interrupted production on this movie, but they clearly didn't use the same techniques that they'd used for Fury Road and it suffered as a result. Mm -hmm. My other big problem is I liked Anya Taylor, Taylor Joy's portrayal of Furiosa. I don't necessarily agree with it. I would have rather seen a sequel with Charlize Theron. Mm -hmm. Like that's just, I don't see the sense in the prequel. And But if we're going to do that, she's good. But then she's only in like half the movie. Mm -hmm. It, I mean, it really feels more like a Dementus movie and how his bid for taking the waste land. Over. I was scratching my head with how long it took for Anya to turn up. We're going to spend yeah. this much time with young Furiosa, like half the movie. It went way past the normal introduction that I thought we would get with, you know, I wasn't surprised to see her really young, but then it was like, I'm like an hour and a half in and mm -hmm. we're still with young Furiosa. I'm like, this is a script problem. Yeah. It, it definitely was for like 30 to 45 minutes too long, in my opinion. Like we could have cut a lot out of it to trim it down and make it a lot more interesting uh, to me. And a lot of that is in the script and the dialogue. There's some things that just didn't need to be there. There were some moments where I was like, this is not good writing. I don't know who wrote it, but I can tell you, like, it was definitely not the same kind of care that was done for fury road and i i i said i'm gonna b go back and say i really wanted to like this movie i mean heck i bought it because i wanted to see this movie and thought you know we had just talked about mad max fury road i thought i was gonna be like this is gonna be great hadn't read up anything about it should have but i digress unfortunately this is this is the same writing team it's george miller and then nick uh, Lothoris, this is the same guys, you know, same group that, that gave us Fury Road. So they just, they missed. Yeah. They just missed on this one. It happens. I, I want to state for the record that like one stubbing your toe like this, George Miller's still incredible. Oh, like, yeah. yeah, I mean, total visionary, love what he does. And it's not like this movie's awful. Hmm. Um, I would not put it in that category at all. And there were, there it had its moments where it was still hugely entertaining watch. I just, I go back to a, a sequel with Charlize Theron is infinitely more interesting. Mm -hmm. And then now I'm like, we've wasted almost a decade and you've not given me a sequel with Tom Hardy. Mm -hmm. And then the fact that this movie even says a Mad Max saga is just super silly to me. Cause he shows up for 10 seconds and if that, and doesn't even like, doesn't even make sense why like he a shows five up. second shot. And I'm like, okay. And it doesn't need to be there. Like it adds nothing to the nothing, story. No, absolutely nothing. Just this is not dumb. a Mad Max saga. This is just a Furiosa saga, which is fine. Play in the universe. Like I'm okay with this, but again, the, the only, so far the only prequel that I've ever really enjoyed and thought was really good. And it's kind of hard to call it a prequel. Phantom um, Menace favorite absolute favorite so though <laughs> how do the prequels if i had to pick one actually it would be phantom menace <laughs> i would <laughs> sorry i would um however uh rogue one i mean it's not truly a prequel no it is it fits i mean it, it fits in the category but yeah. i think they did it right where they focus on characters that are not in the other series and so you don't know like they the, the universe is big enough they could have 
lived, but obviously didn't, you know? And so it's, it's one of those moments of, this is how a prequel is done right. Otherwise, yes, let's do a sequel or let's follow Mad Max because he's the one actually still going on. I mean, she's, you know, Th- Theron is, you know, Furios is running the Citadel. Yes. So unless it's some other outside wasteland members trying to take her, you know, she should be good to go. Right. So, yeah. So this is one of those kind of the story that never needed to be told. Like I kind of. Well, it, it had weird plot points in it that made no sense to me. Like the guy that runs bullet town or whatever, he's like at the Citadel mm-hmm. for some reason. And so they get like bullet town gets overrun and it's like, well, that doesn't make sense. Like just why would that happen? I, I don't know. There was just, there were things like that that just, I was left me scratching my head and I couldn't remind, I couldn't remember for the life of me who ran gas town in Fury Road. Uh, we don't ever see, I don't You believe. don't ever see it? Okay. Yeah. Or if it is, I always kind of thought it was the the really, like one of the, the big guy with the suit, like the dark gray suit, charcoal suit or black suit or whatever, uh-huh. um, who's got the little thing around his um, crotch region that right. is like, I don't know what, what that is dangling there. Um, it's like an actual <laughs> thing. It's not, not, you know what I'm talking It's like, it's like yeah. an actual, like a, uh, Sure. I don't need a hose of some kind. This is, this is sorry. I'm going to go move on. But I think he was the, the gas person. But I mean, I liked I liked that plot point of Dementis taking over Gastown and then it devolving very quickly. That made perfect yeah. sense to me. Like this, this guy's not capable of doing anything. No, no, he can't. And that was by far the more interesting story. If this had been kind of Dementis's story with. Oh, by the way, this is also how Furiosa kind of gets into play that'd be great and also the love angle just didn't fit either kind of no uh, it was like throwaway at the end i mean the the scene where they got captured and like he's drug around was like interesting i mean that's kind of throwback to what the road warrior and Mm -hmm. mad max movies have like always kind of been is the depravity of man that that was kind of uh kind of harkened back to really how these movies kind of felt the early ones with with uh, Mel Gibson, but yeah, I, I don't know. De- like, yeah, Dementis is, he's not my favorite character. It's not like that. It's just like, I found, I found the character sort of intriguing, especially that exchange they have near the end of the film, you know, where something catastrophic has happened to his, you know, wife and, and kids as well. It's not like he was always this way, mm-hmm. but the guy that she drives with was kind of throwaway. He just mm-hmm. felt like a, he needed to I don't be know, there. He felt to like teacher. a Mad Max lookalike. Like he just looked like they grabbed a, a Tom Hardy stunt double and <laughs> <laughs> threw him in the truck. And said, "Here you go. This but, is who you want to be. This yeah, is who you I, need to be." And then the fact that the car sequences just weren't none yeah. of them were nearly as big as anything in Fury Road just mm. felt really odd to me. I, that they couldn't come up with something at least by the end of the film that was bigger, better, louder. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's kind of the, if you can't top the story, then you usually at least make the set pieces bigger and the stunt work bigger. And the, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's like the formula they used for uh, Jurassic Park, the lost world. They knew they weren't going to have a script that was anywhere good as the, the OG, but they were like, oh, well, instead of one T-Rex, let's have two and we'll throw all these crazy stunt sequences in it to make it bigger and louder and noisier and they didn't even try that. Yeah. <laughs> like it no. just, yeah, it, it just was just interesting that some of the decisions, like also uh, in Morton Joe's kids, they're not interesting characters to begin with. Scrotus. And, yeah. Scrotus. <laughs> and also not great. Like they added, I didn't really feel they added that much. I disliked them a ton, which obviously I'm not supposed to like them, but yeah, it was almost like I'd much, again, I would rather have had more time with Morton Joe and kind of, his relationship with Furiosa, if there is one, but basically, you know, but he, because he talks about her in Fury Road about this is my great Praetorian, you know, or whatever, and gives her so much leeway and so much kind of space. And I would feel like he, he's got to have to know her a little bit. And the way he talks with the other Praetorian, with J- uh, Jack, I think it is. I, again, I'd never get that he had that relationship with him. That's far more interesting of how did she get to where she's going to be. So I think it's just a, it's a story we didn't need. And it was a story not as well told and not as interesting as the, the first one. I'm still surprised this has a 7.6 on IMDb, which is rather high in my opinion for this. I would not give it that. 
Not that we rate things on this show ever, but we kind of do, but we kind of do. Yeah. I mean, it, I think it has a passionate fan base that is willing to rate it higher than Mm -hmm. maybe it should be. And gosh, sometimes I wonder if this, you know, the fact that IMDb is not independently owned anymore and is owned by Amazon has always made me question whether the studios can pay Amazon to basically do bot votes on their movies to before. Cause sometimes they get review bombed. Um, and this one really didn't seem to, no. it's, it's quite a bit higher. I, I agree. It's higher than I think it probably should be. It didn't get a bunch of ones and stuff like it didn't get tanked on like some other movies have in the past. So I don't think it's that good. I think no. it's, I think it's a six, five kind of movie. I'll agree with that statement. It's got some interesting set pieces and stunt sequences in it that are, that still that hold up that aren't suffering from CGI work, but then it'll be immediately followed by a scene that, that is. So Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think it's pretty forgettable for me. And I don't plan to pop it in and watch it anytime soon. No, not at all. But quickly going back to Chris Hemsworth, I do want to say that while I definitely think this is in his top of performances of interesting characters, really it still doesn't beat the emotional beats of Star Trek where he played Captain Kirk's father for all of five minutes. I dare you to do better. Your father (laughs) saved 3,000 people or whatever it is. (laughs) The emotional beats that he has, like it just, mm, done. Mm. Chef's kiss. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because there were rumors that the next film, they were going to breach the timeline again and Pine was going to go back and save the universe with his father, Mm. with with Hemsworth. Interesting. The problem with that is that Hemsworth is such a bigger actor than Pine is now. That mm-hmm. it, it he wasn't then, but he no. is now, and so it's like ah, I don't know if I do that to your actor that's playing Captain Kirk. Like, no, it's so. gonna throw a bunch of stuff in. I mean, I, and I think Into Darkness was a pretty decent film. You know, it worked out. It's okay. Yeah, it definitely, it's definitely the original, the 2009 Star Trek is the best. Uh, the first one. You know, of the re of the remakes, yeah. uh, of the remakes. Yes. yes. Yeah. Of the remakes. Sorry. Yeah. Don't don't. Yeah. Be, be don't careful. There's some, I know yeah. some Trek fans that listen to I apologize. I apologize. Trek fans. I some meant Trekkies. of the, the reboot, the JJ Abrams. Yeah. The, the Star Trek film for Star Wars fans. Exactly. Absolutely. My goodness. Um, what else can we say about Furiosa? Not much. No, not much. I Didn't. really can't. Didn't particularly care for this one, man. And that's going to happen. You know, you're going to get a lot of movies out there that are going to fail. But I'd rather, again, I think it's going back to that. I'd rather have movies that take chances, which I don't think this one did, unfortunately, that too much. But I'd rather movies fail but take chances to try to be great as opposed to, like, just give me what they think they want. Yeah. Well, we appreciate everybody tuning in for this week's episode as we crapped all over Furiosa, (laughs) a Mad Max saga. (laughs) Um, no, I'm sure, I'm sure there's, we, there's plenty of people that really enjoy this movie and we, uh, we take nothing away from that and our opinions are our own and it's, it's all good. Um, we just didn't feel like this one, uh, quite hit the mark. And the problem was, is that the mark was really, really high mm-hmm. with, uh, with what Fury, Fury Road is. So, sorry, I, I said Furry Road, it's Fury <laughs> Road. <laughs> that's a, that's, that's a totally different, different movie, movie. entirely. <laughs> <laughs> it probably got a different rating as well. Yes. Um, I, I will interject real quick. I think one thing, if I hadn't, if we hadn't talked about Mad Max Fury Road so so recently, like if I hadn't gone back and watched it so recently, I might have had a better opinion of this film. But having watched that within uh, like two or three months of watching this film, mm-hmm. there is, it's noticeable, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think that's how most people saw it though. I think most people gave... Fury Road to watch within a month or two of mm-hmm. going to see this. So, yeah. But, well, we'll wrap up this week's episode. Again, we appreciate everybody tuning in and uh, giving us a listen. And uh, if you uh, if you want to leave us a review, we would appreciate it um, on either Apple Podcasts or you can give us a star rating on uh, Spotify on the app. It just helps people kind of find us a little bit easier. And we will catch you uh, next week. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>